everyone, and welcome to another episode of God Saw's Turnbuckle, the wrestling podcast here on YouTube and on SoundCloud at this point in time. We are going to try to go into a few other areas uh, as well in the terms of at least audio and everything in that sense, uh, but uh, that's for down the road. Obviously, we've added ourselves over to SoundCloud. We've been having some fun, uh, having some fun getting things up over there and everything up and running at this point in time, but uh, yeah, everything's been running pretty smoothly on that side as well. But, this uh, enough of that, uh, this episode of God Saw's Turnbuckle is going to focus around WWE NXT on August the 8th, not 8th, 9th of 2017, and uh, this was actually a pretty good show. Uh, I'll say I thought it was a pretty good show in the end, and it came off as a very good way of building going into the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Uh, you got uh, other matches made and fully announced going into the... Um, uh, going into that particular show, and like I said, uh, I, I thought things went all, went pretty well throughout the night. Uh, so they started off the show when Nikki, uh, like they were like kind of you know the announcers were announcing what was going to go on and everything in that sense, and they did this a little while ago where Nikki Cross was in the ring, kind of just like not throwing a tantrum, just doing random things, and she's calling out the authors of pain and everything in that sense. Eventually, Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane. Uh, show up inside the ring with her. The authors of Pain come out and they uh, start. To, they just start coming out to the ring. No music, no nothing, any, anything in that sense. Um, but Eric Young reappears and he gets one of the authors of Pain like handcuffed or chained to the guardrail as the other one got in the got into the ring and they had, like the. Sandy had beaten him down as this as the other dude's trying to get into the ring, dragging the barricade, everything in that sense. Eventually gets in and does get beaten down himself. Um, this was this was great. This was really good build towards um, <clears throat> towards that tag team title match at the uh, NXT Takeover Brooklyn show. Uh, just you know, putting the authors of pain into a situation in which they typically are not used to, or you know. You, you, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily being uh, having to back down or anything in that sense. They've kind of done that in the past with uh, Paul Lauer and he's saying, hey, no, we'll do this later type thing. But them getting beaten down in the fashion that they got beaten down in was honestly a nice way of going and making uh, and also making Sanity look like the uh, threat that they should be going into that particular match. And it just came off really, it came off really good. I liked it. Eric Young's back uh, in, in that sense of everything as well. So he plays a role in the, going into that takeover match. Uh, this is a good segment to open up the show. And again, a good uh, another way of showing the authors of Pain in a different light that we typically don't get to see. Uh, so up next, uh, before we have uh, the the first match of the night, you also had a uh, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Uh, they were doing their iPhone thing again, where they they were gonna do makeup tips or something in that sense. But eventually, uh, Ruby Riot walks into the back of the frame. They see her and they start running down Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot doesn't necessarily hear them saying anything, so she's just walking off. They're trashing her. So I think this is gonna probably play into something where. They have some kind of match with either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce. Whether after you know she hears everything, uh, after they play it off that she heard everything that both of them said about her. Um, decent enough segment. Uh, again, this is an interesting one with the uh, the aspect that you know you have pretty much Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. You haven't really seen them on NXT television, and the, with the exceptions of like these iPhone or uh, smartphone type videos over the last so many uh, so many months and everything in that, in that sense. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when they do a match. I, maybe it's something that happens next week. I don't know uh, in that one because it is the go-home show before NXT TakeOver next week. So it should be an interesting one to be seen. Um, you also had a... They showed video as well of... Uh, of Alistair Black leaving the arena and Hideo Tommy basically trying to attack him. I like how uh, Alistair Black throughout the entire thing, even when um, Hideo Tommy initially attacks him, he he almost stays stoic and stone faced throughout the entire thing. It just plays off to that character even more. Now he doesn't even really change his emotions even when leaving the arena uh, in his normal like in normal clothes and everything in that sense. Uh, it was a pretty good segment, and also leading more into their match with Hideo Tommy and Aleister Black at the NXT TakeOver show. Uh, so, 
first match of the night was Chris and JC. They were calling them the Metro Brothers. Uh, they built them up as being uh, guys who were trained by the Dudley Boys, everything in that sense, which I think they were, which I believe they actually were. And they were going to be in a tag team match with the debuting Street Profits. This is pretty, uh, to be honest with you, this is pretty good. I still don't get and I don't like the whole Angelo Dawkins doing the stirring the pot thing. I, that's the one one knock on it. I'm okay with it at this point because both of these guys show good intensity in the ring. But Ford, um, I, first name slipping my mind right now. Last name was Ford. Uh, who was teaming up with Angelo Dawkins to become the Street Profits. One, he has a red Solo Cup at all times. And they even had a guy like with a Street Profits sign and a big red Solo Cup uh, sign as, as well in there. So they're playing off as their kind of party guys and everything to go along with it. Um, he looks really good. Like, he... Uh, like athleticism wise, everything that says he was showing off good athleticism throughout the entire thing. Like you can kind of see that this is going to be one of those first things and that eventually he will break out into some kind of, uh, hopefully some kind of major star somewhere down the road. He looked good in this match. This is a good showcase match for both guys uh, in this one for the Street Profits. It came off pretty well. It came off pretty well and I, I did enjoy myself even though uh, that whole stirring the pot thing just makes zero sense to me with uh, Angelo, da De uh, like Angelo Dawkins, but yeah, it is what it is, and I'll, I, I, I'll kind of put that to the side on the fact that everything else I was seeing, kind of liked it. So, yeah, that, that was like literally the only knock I could give on that. That's really being nitpicky at this point in time for me uh, to go along with it. So, up next was... Uh, was the face-to-face -face with, Bob, uh, with Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre. So Regal's in the ring. He brings both of them out. They kind of both just cut this good promo on, uh, on, on each other. Um, <clears throat> like Roode, ba oh, well, Roode said, bringing out personal security, saying that it, was, it, wasn't for, it wasn't to protect him from Drew McIntyre. It was for him to protect him from Roderick Strong because he's been like a ma maniac recently in the backstage. Uh, but he, when he gets to Drew McIntyre, the line that he gave, and I like this line, um, he uh, like he goes off and says uh, that yeah he that w Drew says that all he sees in Bobby Roode is entitlement and everything in that sense, and Roode's like you're right, I I do feel entitled to everything that I get. But also, I don't need second chances, making reference to Drew McIntyre's first time. And, and McIntyre makes reference to it as well uh, in his uh, promo to go along with it. Um, McIntyre basically, uh, like, so you have Bobby Roode who thinks he's so high up here, everything in that sense. Uh, and Drew McIntyre basically says he's going to claymore him back down to earth uh, in, his, uh, in his portion of the promo. Good stuff, actually, between both guys uh, in that sense of it. Uh, Roderick Strong interrupts. He comes out. Basically, he says he doesn't really want to care about the title or anything in that sense. He just wants to fight Bobby Roode. He wants Bobby Roode in another match. And Roode eventually like starts playing everybody. He's like, sure, I'll fight you if you beat him. And points over at Drew McIntyre. And then Drew McIntyre is like, I'll totally fight him. And Regal's... And, and like Roode's trying to set up the match, but Regal's like, I'm the guy who makes the matches. And everybody's like, and you just have Drew going over there as like, make the match. I want this match. Let's do this uh, type thing. Uh, and everybody's just kind of playing it off. Like the crowd's wanting the match. Roderick Strong is wanting the match. Obviously, Bobby Roode is wanting the match. And Drew McIntyre wants the match as well. So eventually, it, c it does get convinced in that if Bobby Roode or uh, Roderick Strong beats Drew McIntyre next week, he doesn't get added to the takeover match. He gets a match with Bobby Roode after NXT TakeOver. So, plays it off of, like, are we going to get another match with the both of them after NXT TakeOver at some point in time? Is Bobby Roode going to keep the NXT title at, uh, at TakeOver to go along with it? Um, honestly, good segment. I enjoyed this. I, I thought this segment was good. It sets up for the future, for after TakeOver and everything to go along with that. And you have a very strong like semi pun intended there strong main event going into the um go home show for nxt takeover so yeah uh good segment there up next you had johnny gargano 
uh, having an interview backstage, basically saying that he hasn't missed a takeover since uh, last year in Brooklyn. He doesn't plan on starting. He wants a match. Uh, nothing really bi uh, big to this one. He's just like trying to set up a match for uh, NXT TakeOver, saying he wants one. Up next was Oni Lorcan going up against Danny Burch. Again, these guys, they have these hard-hitting matches all the time. Uh, both of them. But each time, it comes to a finish where you don't necessarily expect the finish to come. This time around, they have another hard-hitting good match again. But this time, Danny Burch catches uh, Oni Lorcan with a roll-up. And, you know, after the match again, they play off this whole, like, Danny Burch is playing off respect. Initially, Oni Lorcan doesn't want to do it, but he comes back, shakes his hand, everything that says. It makes you feel like they're going to start some kind of tag team with both of these guys somewhere, uh, somewhere down the road where they both basically play off respect uh, for one another. Kind of like uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano at one point in time. That was basically what that tag team was about. Uh, was more of respect and doing things their way and everything to go along with it. Uh, so maybe that's what they're trying to redo here with Danny Burch and uh, Oni Lorcan. We'll see where everything goes with that one uh, in that sense of it. Uh, so this brings us to the end of the night, which was No Way Jose versus Andrade Cien Almas and Selena Vega is, you kind of got now what she is, is to Andrade. She is kind of his associate. They, they're not playing like a romantic thing or anything in that sense. She is just his associate looking out for his best interest. And going through the match um, where, you know, Andrade was trying to do his typical things he was doing to Tranquilo where he hangs himself into the ropes, eventually gets caught uh, gets caught while doing it again. And uh, Selena Vega is just like berating him throughout the entire match. Like, no more Tranquilo. No more of this. Get in there and get the match done. Uh, and it, it was, it was definitely, it was definitely the way that they were playing, playing it off. It was mostly about, um, Andrade getting focused in a match. And eventually he does get focused and ends out winning the match rather handily over No Way Jose. Uh, and then after the match, Selena Vega goes over to the commentators area. Uh, kind of shoes, uh, she shoes away Percy, uh, Percy Watson, grabs a microphone and says, so, if Johnny Gargano is looking for a match at, um, at NXT TakeOver, he's your guy. And basically challenges Johnny Gargano to have a match with Andrade Cien and all of us at TakeOver, which I think was actually signed. I think on WWE.com they make mention that Johnny Gargano will go up against Andrade Cien and all of us. That should be an interesting... I think the match should be good. I think the match should be good in that sense of it. Uh, but it's definitely interesting. It doesn't really have a full... They don't have like a true feud uh, going into the match. It's just... I guess it's going to be one of those showcase matches or something to go along with it. So overall, not a bad show. Uh, I like the I like the way that they're playing off this whole thing with Selena Vega or Thea Trinidad or however... They're going to obviously re refer to her as Selena Vega. Um... For the time, uh, for uh, for her time in NXT, but the th thing that they have with Selena Vega and Andrade Cien and Almas, a uh, good way of going about it. She pl she's there, not trying to play up as like a romantic angle or anything to go along with it. She is there to be his advocate, to make sure he remains focused. He doesn't like go into full on party mode or like unfocused mode inside of his matches, and it will be. An interesting thing to see how they continue playing off of that. Uh, the stuff with Regal and Rude and McIntyre and Roderick Strong was really good. The, the Street Profits stuff was pretty good as well. The stuff at the beginning of the show with Sanity and uh, the Authors of Pain was really good. Uh, honestly, there's not really much bad to say about this NXT because it came off really good. It was a very enjoyable show overall. So with that being said, everybody, uh, that is all I have for NXT this week. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. And have a great rest of your day. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.